Modal logic is one of the most exciting bits of logic. And one of the things that makes it really exciting is that we have all these different systems of modal logic. What are they? What do they look like? Let's take a look. everyone, welcome back to The Attic. This is a series of videos about the basics of logic. We are currently talking about modal logic, and in this video we are going to introduce the different systems of modal logic. If you're enjoying these videos, if you're finding them useful, or if you just want to cheer me up, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the bell icon to get your updates. So this is one of the really interesting things about modal logic. There isn't just one modal logic, there's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of different systems. They are interrelated and looking at how they relate to each other and how the models relates to the syntax, to the axioms of the logic, that's one of the really interesting things we're going to do. OK, so let's crack on. One of the key concepts we're going to be talking about is a modal frame. We're going to be talking about lots of different modal frames. So what is a modal frame? Well, it's where the accessibility relation in a model has a certain property or it's got a certain condition put on it. We've already seen some of those conditions. It's things like the relation being reflexive or being symmetrical or being transitive. So let's just do a quick recap and remind ourselves what those three properties are. In a reflexive relation, every blob has a loop on it. So if we're thinking about possible worlds, we're saying every possible world is possible relative to itself. Draw it out, they're all going to have little loops on them. A symmetrical relation is one where if there's an arrow going one way, then the arrow comes back again. So all of the arrows are two way arrows. So again, if we're thinking in terms of possible worlds, we would say that if one world is possible relative to another, then each of them are possible relative to the other one. OK, so possibility goes both ways. And a transitive relation is one where you can take shortcuts. So if I can go from A to B and B to C, then I can go directly from A to C. And remember, we can express all of those relations in first order logic. We would do it like this. Everything is related to itself. That is reflexivity. If X and Y are related, then Y and X are related. That's symmetry. And if X, Y are related and Y, Z are related, then X, the first one, and Z, the third one, are related. That's transitivity. So those are three frame conditions that we can talk about. Reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity. But there's two more that we're going to be interested in. Serial relations and Euclidean relations. So let's just have a look at what they are. A serial relation is really simple. It's one that looks like this. So everything has an arrow going out to something. OK, it might be to the same thing itself or it might be to another thing. That's a serial relation. A Euclidean relation is one where if I can go from here to here and also from here to here, then I can go in between those two things. So I can go from there to there. And it turns out as a consequence of that, this little arrow in the middle would be a two way arrow because it doesn't matter whether we're going from top to bottom or bottom to top. And also these two are going to have loops on them. OK, because if I can go from there to there and also from there to there, then I can go from there to itself. OK, so Euclidean models always have this kind of look. So Euclidean models where they have these white arrows, they would also have all the blue arrows as well. The full definition goes like this. So a serial relation is one where there's always an arrow going out. For every possible world, there is a possible world it's related to. For a Euclidean one, we can say if there are these two states and they're seen by a common state, then they're connected. But they don't have to be two states. It could just be one state seen by a common state. So it's connected to itself. The technical definition is... If X and Y and X and Z are related, then Y and Z are related. OK, so here we've got X and Y, X and Z. So Y and Z are related. The loops here are the cases where the X 
sees Y and it also sees Z. So Y and Z are the same state. And this loop is where this state is both Y and Z. That's what causes a bit of confusion over Euclidean relations. They're trickier to spot. OK, so just bear in mind that they are a little bit more tricky and you have to spend a little bit more time thinking them through. OK, so we have all these different frames. We have different logics corresponding to them. What do we do with them? So one thing we're going to be interested in is different notions of entailment. So each of these different frames gives us a different notion of entailment when the premises entail the conclusion. So let's see how that goes. Let's just take the reflexive frame as an example. Then we can say that some premises entail a conclusion with respect to this reflexive frame, they reflexive entail the conclusion just in case for every state in every reflexive model, if the premises are true there, then the conclusion's true there. So this, it's just like our normal definition of entailment in modal logic, but now we're not talking about all of the models whatsoever, we're talking about all of the reflexive models. OK, that is the reflexive notion of entailment. That's what it is for the premises to reflexive entail a conclusion. If we were talking about what it is for them to transitive entail a conclusion or serial entail a conclusion, we would just change this from reflexive models to transitive models or serial models or whatever. Just bear in mind here, when we're talking about reflexive entailing, we're not talking about the entailment relation being reflexive. Entailment relations are always reflexive. They're always transitive. OK, we're talking about which models are we interested in here? We're talking about the reflexive models. If that was trans, we'd be talking about the transitive models. So here are the basic entailment relations that we're going to be looking at. So here we're thinking about serial models. Here we're thinking about reflexive models and so on. This one I've written all there because we're thinking about all models. OK, so this is just our basic notion of entailment that we met previously, looking at all models whatsoever, irrespective of any condition on the accessibility relation. Is it the case that if the premises are true, then the conclusion is true at every state? OK, so let's talk for a minute about partition models. Back when we were doing first order logic, we noticed that when you have a relation that is reflexive, symmetrical and transitive, it's an important kind of relation. It's an equivalence relation. Now, equivalence relations are important in logic because they, they group things together. And when you've got things that are grouped, everything in that group is related to everything else in that group. OK, that's what happens when you have symmetry, transitivity and reflexivity all together. When we put that in the context of modal logic, what we get are models like this. So here we've got a whole bunch of possible worlds, but they've been divided up by the accessibility relation into these clusters. And within each cluster or partition, everything is related to everything else. But nothing over here is related to anything over here or over here. So we have these three distinct clusters or partitions. One here, one here, one here. This is a partition model. It's what you get when your accessibility relation is an equivalence relation. In other words, when it's reflexive, symmetrical and transitive. Partition models are important in modal logic because in a certain way, they allow us to simplify. They allow us to ignore the accessibility relation in a certain sense. So suppose I'm over in this partition here, OK? I can never get to any of these worlds over here. So let's just suppose I ignore all of those and I focus just on the partition I'm in. Then when I'm evaluating the box or the diamond, so I'm talking about every accessible world or some accessible world, rather than saying that, I could just say, every world in the partition or some world in the partition. OK, so in a certain sense, in an equivalence model, I can forget about the accessibility relation and just talk about all or some of the worlds that are in the partition we're interested in. OK, so we said we get an equivalence relation. We get a partition model when we have an accessibility relation that is reflexive, symmetrical and transitive. But there are different ways of getting that. We can also get a partition model when our accessibility relation is reflexive, symmetrical and Euclidean. Symmetry plus Euclideanness gives us the same effect as symmetry plus transitivity. So 
when we've got an accessibility relation that's reflexive, symmetrical and Euclidean, it again is an equivalence relation and we get a partition model. So that's why I said earlier that KTB4, that is normal modal logic plus reflexivity, T, symmetry, B, and transitivity, 4, is the same logic because it's the same class of models, the partition models, as KTB5. That is normal mode logic plus the T axiom, the B axiom, and the 5 axiom, Euclideanness. And they're also called S5. So these three names pick out exactly the same logic. OK, so I just told you that symmetry and transitivity together are equivalent to symmetry and Euclideanness together. Either way of doing it gives us the same accessibility relation. Why is that? So here's a challenge for you. Why don't you pause the video at this point and see if you can prove that. Prove that symmetry plus transitivity is equivalent to symmetry plus Euclideanness. I will give you a clue. You don't need to prove this in modal logic because think about when we introduced these principles like symmetry, transitivity, Euclidean, we wrote down a first order logic sentence like for all x, for all y, for all z, etc. So what we're really looking to do here is prove that one first order logic sentence, symmetry and transitivity, is equivalent to another first order logic sentence, symmetry and Euclideanness. OK, so how could you go about proving that equivalence? Well, think about how you would do it using natural deduction. If you're not sure about that, go back a few videos, look at natural deduction for first order logic and see if you can do that proof. That will keep you out of mischief for quite a long time. OK, good luck with that. So there we have the different systems of modal logic. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have comments on any of this stuff, leave me a comment below. If you're enjoying these videos, consider subscribing to the channel. Next time, we are going to be looking at practical ways, techniques for building models in modal logic and how we can use them to build counterexamples that will help us test arguments in modal logic. So I hope you join me back for that. I'll see you next time.